Hey everybody, it's us again. Um, I don't know why Neil's not up here either, but uh, <laughs> um, okay, so I'll give you a second just to scan that if you want. And here we go. So um, I'm Ewan, uh, met me before I think at this point, but um, software engineer. That is actually my GitHub profile picture, I think. No, oh, wait, it is the beer it one. It is the beer okay, one, Okay, yeah. this is my Slack one. Um, just mayhem in general. Uh, <laughs> That's me. <laughs> it me. Um, okay, so um, you've heard that term old dot being thrown around. Um, we're going to talk about it again. Uh, so I kind of want to take you down a trip down memory lane, so to speak, um, just about old dot and kind of the old version of Expensify as we talk about kind of why we want, why we value cross-platform uh, UX, right? Um, so here is old dot, right? Um, most of our customers use this, right? Uh, they, you know, either the web app or the mobile app on the right. Um, one of the constant headaches we've always faced with old dot um, is that we basically have two clients for the same API. Uh, and then on top of that, we have three code bases, right? Um, so we have our web Expensify, and then we also have mobile Expensify, which is divided up into kind of an Android version and then an iOS version, right? And Yapple sits behind each one of those and controls kind of the models and the controllers and while the, the views are written natively, okay? Um, so this architecture presented us many problems, right? Is you essentially have to write the same thing twice if you want it to exist on both platforms. Um, and then that also leads to inconsistent features. So you can see there are things that exist on the mobile app that don't quite exist on the uh, web app. So on the mobile app, you actually have this trips panel. Uh, if you download the old Expensify, you'll see that there. You can see all your current upcoming trips. Uh, and you know, it's actually, it's kind of cool. It, it, has, it has like a reverse scroll thing. It's, it's interesting, but you can't actually access any of that information um, in that iteration on the web app. Vice versa, uh, you can't. You can you can edit all your policies on the web app, but you can't do any of that on mobile, right? Um, on top of that, you also have inconsistent UX, right? So even if I wanted to maybe, hey, like we want to allow our customers to be able to edit their policies on the mobile app, right? Maybe we'll spit up like a little web container where we show that. Um, well, unfortunately, the policy editor is not really that adopted, uh, adapted for mobile, right? So you can see here on a small screen, everything gets squished up. It's not responsive at all. So, um, you know, and these are just kind of things that, that just happen after you have the same code, a code base that's been, you know, sitting around for maybe 10 plus years, right? Um, and <laughs> the, um, the other thing is you also have another example of inconsistent UX is there would be features that do exist on both platforms. So maybe a relatively newer feature for the old dot app um, is the inbox. Uh, I remember at least this was built maybe like six years ago or something like that. Um, but even here, you still have that inconsistency. So um, the version that we show you on web is going to be differ from the version we show you on mobile, um, just based off of functionality or, or whatever that you can't access. Um, okay. So, um, how do we kind of get out of this mess, right? Um, so, we want an app that has features that are always in sync, right? Um, that has consistent UX across all platforms uh, and uses the same API across the board, right? Um, we used to actually have commands that were mobile only or web only, right? Um, and so that was a bad inconsistency. Uh, we'd even have spots in code where um, in the API and web expensify where you would say if the request is coming from the mobile app do this if it's coming from web do something else right and this just um, you know leads to problems as you kind of build on top of that more and more and more um, we also want industry standard code and libraries why so we can work with people like you right um, and so you can jump right in right away understand what's going on a lot better without having to kind of get the story of like why this exists the way it is right um, and then finally, uh, we can have a synchronous and consistent deployment process, right? So um, let's say you're rolling out a new feature. You don't have to maybe time the mobile app and the web app to go out at the same time. Mobile and web are the same thing, right? You just deploy and boom, you have it on all the platforms. Um, 
And not only that, but if you, with an app like this, kind of the entire organization behind the app uh, can move fast because of generalization, right? So uh, we used to have a dedicated mobile team um, and oftentimes for new features, we would kind of split them up, right? Where you'd have someone from the mobile team would work on the mobile portion, someone from the web team would work on the web portion. Um, that causes a lot of areas where things get out of sync. Um, maybe you don't have the best communication between the two people, whatever. Things, you know, it just leads to more problems, right? Um, so, um, this is inefficient, so, so kind of the easier way is just to have one engineer maybe write both, right? Um, or better yet, just write one thing instead of having to write something twice. Um, the other great thing is everyone's working on the same thing, so we can help each other out, right? It's not like um, you're pigeonholed into this team, someone asks you about, um, you know, you're, you, you don't go, oh, that's not my problem, it's on mobile, right? Um, everything's everybody's problem, we all help each other out, um, makes for a better team. Uh, you can also design features quicker, right? So you have to think about what is this gonna look like on mobile, what is this gonna look like on web? It's kind of the same responsive design, and much, much more seamless. Uh, and then finally, you can support customers with ease, right? So a consistent UI leads to kind of consistent customer support experience as well. Um, so with New Dot, we can kind of have that all, right? Um, kind of a single code base uh, for all platforms, uh, supported by React Native and React Native Web. Um, so here it is, this is the mobile version, but you know, you can essentially take that and widen it out, uh, and you basically have a web app too. So. Uh, Jasper will now talk about um, how kind of you uh, as contributors kind of help keep the stream flourishing. So uh, first, we're gonna go over some of the rules to writing um, a cross-platform application, I guess, and the user experience that goes with that. So first rule, probably the most important rule that you've seen is that features have to work across all platforms, which is kind of obvious if you think about it, but <laughs> Um, basically, until a feature is implemented, tested, and deployed on all platforms, we don't consider it to be done. That's why we have that insane like testing rule with all of our app PRs, where you have to do like a screenshot, screen recording of like every platform when you implement a feature. Um, so it goes with that that you also have to design your UX um, such that these features are accessible on all platforms, which makes sense. And finally, we wanna try as best as we can to avoid writing platform um, specific code. I know there's definitely a few places where we are doing that, but we're trying our best not to. And let's try to rely on the power of um, React Native to write features um, to avoid platform specific code. So one example we have of kind of this cross-platform UX with um, user actions is our report action context menu. Um, pretty much it's those little icons there for a web that you see that allow you to just take actions with certain report actions, um, like copying a clipboard or marking it in red. Um, and on web, you kind of hover over the report action to pull that up. To keep that accessible on mobile, you can't hover over stuff on mobile if you don't have a mouse, so you long tap, long press on the, um, the message to pull up the context menu. Um, another example that's more of a display thing is we reuse this exact same component Oh, well, that's kind of blurry. But we reuse the exact same component, um, the left-hand nav, on web slash desktop and on mobile. That's pretty much just the same component used. Um, it's the same code. And we basically just stick it into a drawer navigator on um, mobile so that we can reuse it pretty much. And finally, kind of a little deeper, we have Onyx, which is our um, persistent storage solution on the client. And this is also, um, the exact same code across all devices, and it kind of leverages React um, Native's async storage to do that. Um, so another thing we have is if there are any problems with React Native that are preventing you from writing the feature or fix the bug that you're looking into, do not hack around these bugs. Try to submit an upstream um, fix to React Native um, to kind of um, get it to work. Um, this is for a number of reasons. Obviously, like, if you try to hack around the bug, it's gonna come back to bite you in the butt later on. Um, but also, you're also just helping the React Native community, which is pretty cool. Um, 
So now I'm going to talk about rules kind of for platform-specific exceptions. So these are cases where um, you're actually, I guess you're just writing platform-specific code. Um, first of all, we have kind of our file organization syntax. Um, this is an example. Let's say you're implementing a button. Um, so by default, if you just have a button.js component for this button, all platforms will kind of point to that JavaScript file. Um, so every platform, web, mobile web, desktop, um, Android, iOS, all of them will use that. If you add a button.native.js file, then it'll kind of start to separate out, and then you'll be, you'll be writing platform-specific code. So in this case, you'd have web, mobile, web, and desktop pointing to button.js, and um, iOS and Android pointing to button.native.js. Um, and finally, if you want the most fine-tuned control, you want to be able to control specifically what happens on iOS and Android, then you can kind of use .ios.js and .android.js. So this is an example of that happening with our date picker. That's one of the components where it's OK to kind of write platform-specific code just because the behavior on different platforms is very different. You can see here we have an index.js, index.ios.js, index.android.js, and those are kind of the respective views that go with each of those files. Um, so sometimes you're also going to be writing features for components or features that just don't, they, they don't exist on certain platforms just because they don't make sense um, on those platforms. Um, so a good example of that is kind of like the keyboard avoiding view. Pretty much what that is is when you pull up the virtual like touchscreen keyboard, it shifts content out of the way. But that doesn't make sense on like web or desktop where you don't have a touchscreen and therefore you don't have um, a virtual keyboard. And so what we want you to do in this case is to still use that file syntax that I talked about earlier, but um, instead of kind of doing anything with the component, write a shim component that just no-offs. Um, so what I mean by that is here you can see in the keyboard of any of you, I don't know if you can see, but really all it's doing is it's just passing the props that you give it and just directly rendering it in a view. So pretty much it's just doing nothing, basically. Um, so yeah, quick recap. We have our cross-platform rules, which is features have to work across all platforms. They have to be tested across all platforms. Um, and instead of hacking around React Native bugs, try to actually push an upstream fix to React Native. A um, few rules for our platform-specific exceptions. Use the file organization format. Um, when you're kind of writing platform-specific code, split it up into different files, as opposed to using you know, if conditions and checking the platform. And use shim components that no op when certain features don't make sense to exist on certain platforms. So yeah, that's, that's about it. That's all we got. Any questions? Yeah, all right. I love the note in the room, but we also have index.website.js, index.desktop.js. I did not know that. OK. Um, <laughs> and if you don't want to use index.web.js, which is like the common React Native standard, and the reason for that is because our Electron app is essentially a web app wrapped around Electron. Um, so, uh, and we, we, so it relies on index.web.js files that come from third-party node modules. So if you're trying to write something specific to our website in our repo, use index.website.js. Is there an index.web? No, no, because that's just be website. not known at the compiled node. No. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yes.
you're saying specific library functions that are platform like that are platform specific? Um, yeah, so for example, if, if I already start other code base bigger, uh, I can think of a particular example, but I have I think we have ones that make that find an imposter in the room, but uh, it would be a subfolder with uh, So one thing is I mean I mean I think if if that Function is really only going to apply to one platform and one component, right? Um, that's something you could probably toss into, you know, index.android.js and just use it there, right? Um, I think when we're talking about functions that might go um, cross-component but are going to be platform-specific, I, I don't think have we hit anything like that. We have, okay, Tim. I don't know if you want to um, elaborate. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have examples of that in our code feeder, and I, I understand what you're saying. Instead of doing index, like just call it. Oh, okay. um, and I think we're totally open to doing that. Uh, this is just taking advantage of kind of the native model resolution that we get. And so it's probably just some flip pack config. Yeah. That's fair. That's something we should probably look into. Um, thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That was yeah, that was moved off. We're using it was like SQLite or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you.